High fire signs, Aries, they are Sagittarius, Ascendant, Sun, Moon, Venus, Rising. And those of you that are cross-watching as well, and welcome to your Tarot Love Messages. In today's reading, we're going to take a look and see what are your person's current feelings towards you, towards the situation that you're in, and towards this overall connection. There is going to be a part two to this reading as well, guys. And in part two, we are going to follow on with the messages and hopefully explore those messages in more depth and detail. Part 2 is going to be made available via the extension link below. For those of you interested in a personalised reading, as this is a general one, please feel free to reach out and inquire. My email address will be listed below the video. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and let's see what are your person's current emotions and feelings about you and the situation. Okay, the High Priestess, but she's kind of come out in reverse. Um, the Devil's energy does bring a bit of a negative influence on the overall energies of the spread. Okay, the, the Devil here is a very... Um, is a very fearsome kind of energy. And uh, I feel like this is where your person is at. I feel like... Um, they're scared okay there's a very strong fear-based energy present in the readings they are scared to love you the way that you deserve to be loved they are scared to open themselves up in order to be loved they are scared to fall in love with you they are scared of all of the emotions and the experiences the vulnerabilities as well as the possibilities that come with it they are scared to show you who they really are okay it's not because they're showing you a side that isn't them. It's not because they're pretending to be someone that they're not. But they're scared for you to see the real them, the raw them, the vulnerable them. They are scared to love again. They're scared to... They want this. But their fear is bigger than they want. It is their fear of what this could be and what this is and what this means for the both of you is bigger than what they want okay now this fear driven energy it's some is something that has been with them for quite some time it's quite consistent with this person's energy and you'll notice that the way that they handle themselves with you and in the situation in romantic situations is very consistent with someone who's afraid someone who's afraid to open themselves up someone who's afraid to fall in love and be in love and be in a relationship they're afraid of getting hurt they're afraid of consequences of repercussions uh, so they're, they're also afraid of losing you okay they're afraid of becoming attached to you they're afraid of you know of things becoming more serious it's not because they don't want this it's because they're scared that this might not work okay and you might not feel what they feel and you might not love them the way that they want to be loved and this might not work out in the end and you might they might lose you you might walk away you might decide one day that hey this isn't for you basically they're scared of everything that could happen right um and it's if they don't and it's this very fearsome energy that's controlling how they're behaving and it's also controlling their emotions and it's dictating their emotions because you'd notice that sometimes they might be very inconsistent with what they say or do. Or you'll notice how sometimes it's almost like they'll want to open themselves up and talk to you about how they feel. But something holds them back, right? Um, or you could just feel it in the energies like they're holding back. They want this, okay? But to me it feels like they're not... Um, they might not be ready for this. They might not be ready for all of this as well. Um, Seven of Swords is a deceptive energy, but I don't think your person is lying to you. I don't think they're not being truthful about who they are or how they feel for you. 
I think it's more inner deception than anything else because the High Priestess in reverse points upwards to the Seven of Swords. So inner deception means that they're not confronting, okay, where this fear is coming from. It's driven by, it could be driven, it's subconscious, okay, You've got the Eight of Cups here. Um, it could be driven by an emotional wound that was never really healed and that still festers. So, because um, there's a lot of, there's this fear of abandonment. And with your person, what happens is their attachment style is not healthy because they, it's an anxious attachment style. They cling to people. They cling to people because they've lost um, people in the past or people have abandoned and walked away from them. So what they do is they clutch onto them. They hold on to them um, for fear of losing them. And it's what's happened in the past. And, you know, people have walked away or they've abandoned or rejected them. And this way they're so scared to get close because there's every chance that it might not work out. There's every chance that it might fail in the process. So this is their way of trying to protect themselves. Of course they want this Ten of Cups scene with you. They want this idyllic Ten of Cups. But they need to understand that in order to get this Ten of Cups, they have to, you know, they have to become vulnerable. They have to open themselves up, okay? Um, and even if it means, you know, getting hurt in the process, that's that's what love is, right? There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees that come with it. So your person can't keep running away forever. Or your person can't keep you know, saying shut off forever, sooner or later, they're going to have to put themselves out in the open. The other thing that your person does is they walk away or they run. Their energy feels like it tries to escape. You know, you've got the Knight of Swords here, Seven of Swords, the Eight of Cups. Um, so before anyone else has the opportunity to ghost them or to walk away or to reject them, this person pulls a plug first. And what that is, is a um, it's essentially uh, an unhealthy pattern that they've developed of self-sabotaging or uh, self-jeopardizing in the process. And it's basically them saying, I'm going to hurt you before you you know, ever get a chance to hurt me. It's them walking away before you can walk away from them. It's them ghosting you before you even get a chance to ghost you. And again, it's not like you have, and it's not like you have the intention to do that to them. But they've been so jaded in the past and they've been so hurt in the past that they can't stand to, you know, feel abandoned or rejected all over again. And what they do is they then engage in this destructive and unhealthy and sabotaging patterns, both, both behavioral and emotional. Okay, and, and that's what they do. They run. You'll notice this person that you're in, every time you try to bring up conversation about feelings, emotions, or where this connection is going, they often act distracted, or they often act uncomfortable, or they'll often try to change the topic of conversation, um, or they'll, you know, they'll simply turn around and say, look, I don't want to talk about this now, because it's their way of avoiding. There's a, there's a lot of avoidance in the energy. This person runs, this person avoids. Um, because they can't deal with it. They can't deal with it emotionally. They can't deal with this, whatever this is for them up front, like head on. Okay, so what they do is, like even these abandonment issues that are coming up in the energies, for instance, they may have been, um, they may have felt this abandonment in their emotional up environment, in their upbringing. It could stem as early back as their childhood days, their young adolescence days. It could ha have happened in previous relationships, romantic um business, friendships, it might have echoed throughout all different relation, all different types of relationships in the past and because this is how it's always been, this is what they always know and they just sort of, they come into a relationship with these preconceived notions that it's not going to work out or the person is going to abandon them or reject them so they already gear themselves up to run, right? Um, but they do want with you. They do feel a, a connection with you, okay? And of course they have, with your person's current feelings, there's this really strong um, attraction. There's this really strong chemistry, okay? It's a sexual energy. It's an allure. It's a connection. It's so intense. The problem with it being so intense, and I don't see it being expressed in a healthy way by this person. And ultimately when feelings are this intense, when they don't get expressed in a healthy way, in a healthy outlet, they can... Um, they can become very destructive, right? So with your person, they have a lot of love to give, but 
in the past they may have um, you know aimed that love towards the wrong person or they've never really channeled it outwards so you know they've always maybe they've had this pattern they've had this um, habit of going for the wrong partners partners who would hurt them who would betray them who would end up leaving them or they'd engage into relationships that they know won't work out and maybe this is what's happening with you too you know maybe they feel like yes the both of you share a very strong connection and it's very intense but on some level maybe you and they already know that it's not going to work out and that's the very reason they feel so drawn to you they feel so connected because there's something here that feels a little bit unhealthy. There's something here that feels a little bit toxic, whether it's about the individual energy or about the energies of the connection. So it's like there's this conflict. Even though they know either something that they're doing is toxic to the relationship and it's hurting the relationship, or they may feel like the both of you are, you know, you're not exactly a, a healthy match for each other. But that's why they're drawn to you, because in the past... You know, they've seeked out people that, or relationships that were doomed from the start. Okay, and this is what they do, okay, because that would mean then that they get a chance to walk away. And, you know, it's self, they'll explain it away by, you know, the relationship not working or the relationship was doomed from the start. When this is what they when this is initially what they seek out from the very beginning. So it's their way of avoiding a relationship, their way of avoiding emotional intimacy, if that makes sense. I know it can be very um, complicated to understand, but I do feel like with your person's energy, they refuse to confront their own um, insecurities or their own anxieties, or you know, they're refusing to confront this negative influence that their energy seems to be under. Um, and I just think, you know, a lot of what they say and do is ultimately dictated by their fee, okay? It's driven by their fee, but I also feel like it's not all intentional because some of it does feel like it's really, it's, it's, it's coming from a place that is buried, like subconscious and it's buried into, into their subconscious. Like for instance, even this fear of abandonment and rejection, because it's something that they've never really dealt with. They've kind of pushed it away or buried it inside of them, but now it's manifesting itself and it has... Uh, manifested itself as patterns uh, destructive or you know sabotaging patterns over the relationship and it's just something that they've become so accustomed to that they don't even you know realize what it is that they're doing or you know the type of partners or relationships that they're seeking so a lot of it is not even intentional truth be told it's driven by uh, you know a, a wound that's so deep in their subconscious um, but their current feelings for you, I think, you know, they want to love you and there is every chance that they do, but they're scared for this to go any further. And I think your person is going to, or has been, or is going to pull away because of this fear. And unfortunately, if they don't control this fear, it's going to control them, okay? So in part two of the reading, we're going to explore what exactly is the um, outcome. Uh, where will this connection go? Uh, you know, if this person is pulled away, will they come back or will they come back after they distance themselves? So follow me to part two of the reading via the extension link below. Thanks guys for watching and listening. Please show your support by liking, sharing and subscribing to the channel. Bye.